It's Wednesday night, and we're studying the Old Testament. We're going through it. We've gone through the book of Genesis, every character, every event in the book of Genesis. It took us about two and a half years. We moved into the book of Exodus, and Exodus is exactly that. It's exiting from Egypt. That's what Exodus means, to exit. You see a sign over there that says, Exit. That means they're going to exit Egypt, and they're going to go into the, going to go into the wilderness. They'll be in the wilderness 40 years, and then they're going, going to come out of the wilderness, go back into the promised land, and repossess the land that had been given to Abraham about 650 years prior to this, after Abraham received that promise. It was given to Isaac, given to Jacob, and then Jacob's 12 sons had 12 sons, 11 of them sold their brother into Egypt, sold Joseph, the 11th born, and uh, they were there for 400 years, and they come out, and Moses is born in that second chapter of Exodus, and he goes before Pharaoh 10 times, and there's 10 plagues brought up on Egypt, and that 10th time is the death of the firstborn. That's very significant. Death of the firstborn. Very significant. We're going to talk about some of that tonight, but before we do, I'm going to try to wind up what I've been teaching you on the spiritual Passover. Now, I don't believe hardly anybody understands this. I've never heard anybody else teach it. I do not go by the standard of what the historical church teaches. I go by the Bible. I will go and study Jewish books, culture books on the Jews, their idioms, their metaphors, what they meant when they said things. And the Jews' books are filled full of idiomatic language. The Bible is filled with idiomatic language. And very few pastors or preachers in America even understand that. I've never really heard anybody that understood it overall. You didn't just have a lamb at the Passover. You had a lamb. That's just one item. You had bread, unleavened, leaven being a type of sin. I want us to look at some of these things. The last item was bitter herbs. The word bitter is a very common uh, word. Uh, it's mara, means bitter. The word Mary comes from that, and the name Mary, and bitter, when Naomi came back after her husband died, after her two sons died, and when uh, Naomi comes back over to Israel, and Ruth comes with her, she says, you can call me Mara, because I am bitter. Now, The bitter herbs of the Passover. The bread at the Passover was dipped into the bitter herbs and that was called the sop. When The fact that Jesus said, whoever I dip in the sop and give the bread to, he's the one that's going to betray me. Proof, another proof of the Passover was dipped in the sop. Another proof that they were not eating crackers and drinking grape juice. They were sitting at a triclinium table just like those pictures on the wall and at feast days, they lay down. Feast days, the Jews lay down to eat. And they lay on what they called a dinner bed. Dinner bed or a tri three-way clinium. A triclinium was a three-sided table. And they always ate their feast meals on these three-sided tables. The woman would walk in here. They would lie prone up on this. 
the legs sticking out the back side, and they would lie upon their left arm, and they would lean back if they wanted to talk to the man behind them. They would lean back, and it was said he was, you were lying in someone's bosom. So when John lay in Jesus' bosom, it wasn't that stupid, silly picture you see of Leonardo da Vinci showing John laying his head down in Jesus' bosom. That's one of the dumbest theological pictures I've ever seen in my life. It's disgusting. Whenever we see Lazarus in the 16th chapter of Luke, Lazarus is the, is the poor man, he's the beggar, and the Bible says Lazarus died and it was carried to Abraham's bosom. The reason it says that, that is a picture of the triclinium table in heaven. God is going to use their terminology, not ours. So whenever they use that terminology, everyone knew that being in the bosom was like lying at a triclinium. So the sop, the triclinium table, lying down means they were eating a feast and they weren't eating crackers and drinking grape juice. But let's look at these bitter herbs. Wormwood. That was the common word for something real bitter to the Jews. So I want us to turn over here to Deuteronomy 29. I want us to look at a few of these verses. Look at verse 18. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Wormwood was a term used, he says, if there's someone among you that goes after these gods, there's going to be the drinking of gall and wormwood. Wormwood was a term that meant to undergo trials. Now look over here in... Proverbs 5, Proverbs the 5th chapter, chapter 5, verse 3, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. I believe the strange woman is not just merely talking about a literal harlot, it's talking about the harlot of Babylon. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death and her steps take hold of hell. That's what happens when you drink wormwood. Look over here in Jeremiah 9. Jeremiah is preaching to Israel because of all of their apostasy. Jeremiah the ninth chapter. <clears throat> Jeremiah 9 and verse 12. Who is the wise man that may understand this now remember, Jeremiah is preaching to a rebellious people that will not repent and saying, Judgment's coming, Nebuchadnezzar's coming in to carry you away. And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken, that he may declare it? For what the land perisheth, it is burned up like a wilderness that none passeth through. And the Lord saith, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein. <clears throat> He's talking about Judah. Northern Israel has already fallen. And he says, Now Judah has not obeyed my voice, but have walked after the imagination of their heart, and after Balaam, may I remind you, I am on the end of the word is plural, and they had a God on every street, and an altar on every street. This is Israel we're talking about which their fathers taught them. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed these people Israel, even this people with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the heathen. This is the wormwood he's talking about. Israel is going to be dipped into wormwood. The bread had to be dipped into the bitter herbs of the Passover. Hosea, the 13th chapter, God says, I'm going to meet Israel like a lion, a bear, and a leopard. That was Babylon, Persia, Greece, wasn't it? The Babylonian lion, the Persian bear, the Grecian leopard. 